your version of events are somewhat different from what transpired. The fact that she will came into the diary room and decided to call Ibuka a liar, and also Big Brother calling her out on her lies. Guys, I was watching she was in a section and I'm like, this is the like you can explain, explain, explain tire because no evidence. But for this one, evidence, full evidence bracket. Evidence was everywhere. Big Brother was pulling out evidence, calling her out on all, on all her life. She was the essential is what I'm here to discuss with you guys. Let's have a dialogue. Let's talk about it. Let me know your thought down below in the comment section. Because guys, what Chigwe and Big Brother went through during their dialogue session, someone said it was aura for aura. They went band for band. They went M for M. Because Chigwe was lying. Big Brother was calling her out. Shinwe was lying. Big Brother was calling her out. Shinwe tried to brainwash Big Brother into believing her own perspective. But Big Brother was like, no, I am the Big Brother and I see everything. You might have convinced your boyfriend or the housemate that this is what you did or this is what you meant. But for me, it would be hard for me to be convinced. Biggie. You must remember. Big Brother sees and hears everything. Yes, Biggie. You may proceed. Guys, I welcome you today. <laughs> hey, welcome you to today's video. My name is Shooks and this is Powerhouse of Positivity. So, you already know this housemate Big Brother has been calling them separately, not by pairs, but individually to come and have their personal diary session. And today, the likes of Double uh, K, the likes of Double K, the calories, the bed, they all came to their diary session. And the Zingwe pair also came for their diary session, but it was Zingwe, uh, Shinwe's diary session that I paid more attention to because I want to see what happened. We remember during Sunday night eviction what happened, what transpired between her and Ebuka. And so I was keen to hear what she would say during her diary session, how she would vent, coupled with the fact that she's been giving housemate this uh, weird energy, she's been having this weird energy about her since that life eviction show. And so when she came into the house, Big Brother asked her how she was feeling. And she was like, Big Brother, she's happy, but she's drained. Uh, she has a low energy, but she's happy. So Big Brother was like, okay, what kind of energy are you low on? Is it physical energy or is it mental energy? And she said, it's a little bit of both. So Big Brother was like, okay, Shinwe, tell me, what is it that has been draining your energy or what has drained your energy? Guys, Shinwe started talking. Like, Shinwe talked for more than 45 minutes, if I'm not mistaken. Or maybe more than 30 minutes and she was just painting a different scenario of what everybody saw of what big brother showed the whole viewers she was changing the narrative trying to twist what trying to just trying to play a different game trying to tell big brother what he saw that transpired during that fight between him her and uh, the shaka sisters was not what happened and I'm happy that Big Brother called her out on different occasions. And coupled with the fact that she outrightly called Ebuka a liar. How my own words were being misconstrued. But How were your words misconstrued by the host? But the first thing that happened was when uh, during the live eviction show, when Ebuka uh, kind of took what he said, what she said out of context. I mean, I was like, no, he did not take it out of context. You said something and he called you out. In fact, what you say is more like that. Like what you said is more bad than how Ebuka phrased it, guys. I was just looking at that guy's and I'm like, this is the big brother I like to see. The big brother that calls this housemate to their bullshit. Because this housemate have always tried to, whenever they come into the diary room, they try to change the narrative of how we the viewers are seeing them. So for big brother to give Chin a reality check. I was like, no. What did you say? I said, I've literally had to hold Zion's hand. What you did and what you are explaining you did are two different things. And she went the other hand was like, no, Biggie, what I did and what Ebuka said are two different things. And her big brother would be like, no, what Ebuka did was even slighter than what you did. What you did was heavier. What you did was very, like, Yo guys, it was it was a big one. So then had the answer, she said that the events of Sunday got her down, but or yesterday she kind of felt good. And I'm like, okay, maybe it's because of the dose of Zion she got yesterday. That's why she felt good. 
And uh, she went on saying that, you know, that even after yesterday, after she felt good yesterday, she woke up today feeling kind of bad. And uh, the energy that she's getting from the housemate are off. And coupled with the fact that some of the housemates that she's close to are now distancing themselves from her, now annihilating her from it from themselves, that she doesn't even know why it is happening. And Big Brother was like, have you asked yourself why that is the case? And she's like, no, Big Brother, but I don't think I'm that kind of person that will always go looking for people's trouble. I'm a cheerful person. She kept on praising herself, how she gets along with everybody. And Big Brother was like, let's take it back to the... Uh, last week's uh, head of house head of house uh, ballot, and she was like, "Yes, big right." And big asked like, "Did you campaign for the vote? Did you appeal to the housemate to vote for you?" And she was like, "Yes." So big was like, "Okay." At the end of there, you when you found out that you, that you didn't win, how did you react? And she was like, "No, you see, big brother, I was pained. I was no, no. How did you react?" And she was like, "No, big brother, the thing is, I was pained, and uh, it was only them, but they were twins." that I didn't uh, speak to for a couple of days after what happened because I, I, I have spoken with them before the uh, head of house ballot and they promised their vote to me and they went on and promised the same thing so for that I felt like they betrayed me, they threw me under the bus so that was why I didn't talk to them for a couple of days and during that period of days that I didn't talk to them they used that opportunity and started talking back, started about mounting me to all these housemates. And the funniest thing is that these housemates are now judging me from them by the perspective, that they are not even giving me the chance to explain myself. They are not giving me the opportunity, they are not giving the opportunity to get to know me. They are just judging me from what them by the twins said, and it is not good. She also went on rambling how the housemate uh, didn't help the matters after what happened during the life eviction show. And also how Ebuka misinterpreted her word. That Ebuka took her word out of context. And coupled with the fact that when that happened, the housemaid was like, oh, uh, I, 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 just acting as if she committed the worst offense in the history of humankind. But what she, but it's because what she said was taken out of context from Ebuka. And Ebuka was like, no, it wasn't. So what she said wasn't taken out of context. If you feel like it was taken out of context, Go and ask uh, DJ Flo how she interpreted what you said. Because what we or uh, what uh, the host, which is a book, interpreted from what you were saying was that you sponsored Zion, or was that you have been taking everything you've been taking care of Zion? And Shima was like, "No, Big Brother, that wasn't what I mean. Uh, what I meant it was that during the process of getting into Big Brother Niger House, I've been the one taking care of everything. I have her, I've been holding uh, uh, Zion's hand, making sure that she that he does everything that is required of us to do." She also shared a vote of thanks to the custodian for not voting her out, citing that if it was another housemate or if it was another pair that was the custodian, that she would have been gone. By now that she knows in her heart of heart that if it was another housemate or if not for the power of evict only that the custodian which are the streets got on sunday that by now that she would have been gone that when big brother called her name in the top four housemates with the least vote that he could that she could feel the housemate being eager to just come into the dining room and call her name and vote her out but at the end of the day she is happy that she's still in this house and happy for the custodian for not and happy to uh, that the custodian didn't vote her out with their power to evict one house she went on and on and on and on trying to explain to big brother what she meant by what she said that they misinterpreted her his her word that they kind of took her word out of context she she tried like on she tried like she went on and on and on trying to uh, let big brother see it from her own side but Big Brother was adamant and like, no, I'm not going to say it from your own side because I know what you did. I know what you said. And Ebuka is also watching the show. And I am Big Brother. I see everything. So you can't just change my mind on what I see and what I know. She also said that she has taken full responsibility for everything that she does, that, she's taking, that she takes responsibility for her action and her word. But for what happened on Sunday, it was misinterpreted and taken out of context. And she will keep on saying it that what she said and what Ebuka interpreted were, was totally two different. And Big Brother was like, no, 
what Ebuka said is even actually uh, slighter, slightly better than what you said. What you said, you kind of you, you kind of reduce this guy to nothing. But Ebuka tried to patch it up and make him not feel bad. And she was like, Yes, big brother, I know, but it was still taken out of context. And I've and I've spoken with Zion. I know as a guy, his ego must have been bruise, uh, bruising, but I talked to him and I have begged him. I tried to make him understand that what I said was not what Ebuka translated, that it was taken out of context. And uh, she's happy to say that to get uh, that they are happy now. And uh, hopefully, Zion will see her in a good way and not uh, hold grudges against her or plan for revenge. And it reminded me of what happened uh, today. The conversation, I think it was Miki. Uh, of Femi and the, the what's his name Zion was having, and Zion was talking about all the sex that him and him and uh, Shimwe has been having, and I'm like Zion, this is not this is not the kind of conversation you will be having in the public. Maybe just maybe Zion is still angry over what Shimwe said about taking care of him, uh, sponsoring his uh, lifestyle and all that thing. And he's trying to get back at Shimwe by making that kind of comment. Cause as a guy, you never, you never hit and talk. Like, it, is, uh, it, it is the general rule. Don't eat and talk. Like you don't talk outside what happens indoors. So for Zion to come out and publicly say that yes, that he and Shimwe, that he and Shimwe has been having sex in the house since they get into this house. I think it's a, it's his way of getting back to Shimwe. But let me know what you think about that, that whole conversation between Zion and uh, all the other all the housemates. I think it was a family where they talked about their sex capital and uh, also confirmed that Sean and uh, Wani X and had sex. What do you think about that? Let me know what your thought, Adam. She also talked about uh, how she doesn't want Zion to feel bad and uh, how she wants Zion to know that whatever was said during that period of her being angry was not what she meant and that some emotions overwhelms her but she is trying now to learn not to speak when angry or not to talk out of anger that she has seen how hard or how hurtful the what she said can can be to other housemates especially to Zaya but she's trying her best not to talk out of anger and people are asked her okay how do you feel about the uh, a DJ Flo and uh, the head of house uh, ballot that you casted and she was like yes big brother I noticed that in that house DJ Flo is my only person and also Zion they are the only two people that I talk to in that house I used to be close to one ex and deeper but after what happened I've noticed that whenever I try coming to them they always take their face away they don't even kind of acknowledge me I'm always the one reaching out for their friendship but they've been distancing themselves from me so Ruti and uh, DJ Flo are the only partner in that house are the only housemate in that house that I talk to so me voting for them during that head of house ballot is my way of showing them appreciation and telling them that they are not alone in that house because she also noticed that they too are also their only partner they are the only pair that are always sitting alone that they don't talk to anybody that even if they want to talk is her and them so her casting her vote for dj flo and ruti is her way of showing that you are not in this journey alone and they talked about a lot of things but these are just the most important thing that they talked about that i say let me come share with you guys so guys just what do you think about the whole dying section if you watched it but if you don't watch it what do you think about what i have summarized in today's video uh chingwe calling a bukalaya uh, telling a different story from what happened between her and the chizoba and the uh, wani x and the and the uh, onyek at the fight because she painted a different scenario and uh, i'm happy that big brother called her out for that so what do you think share your thought down below i would like to hear what you think and how you view everything that has been going on in the big brother niger house i'll see you guys on another one have an amazing day bye bye